Hi there, this is Bernard Farrell. Um, in a second I have a video coming up that shows you how the new Dexcom Open Choice system works against the old Dexcom system. The old Dexcom system could only be calibrated by a one-touch ultrameter and you had to carry around that terrible six-foot cable. The new Dexcom system can be calibrated with any meter. This is going to be much handier for those of you who don't already use a one-touch system because now you can continue to use the system you have and just input the values manually. You'll see there's not a big difference in terms of the speed of doing one versus the other. And I think you'll like the change. Have a look at the video. If you have any questions, please email them to me or um, continue to read my diabetes blog at blog.bernardfarrell.com. Thanks. So here are the two Dexcom receivers. On the right hand side is the Dexcom 7 that was released uh, in June of last year and the One Touch Ultra with the calibration cable. On the left is the Dexcom One Choice system. It's a minor upgrade from this. You can calibrate it with any meter you like. You can of course continue to calibrate it with the One Touch and the calibration cable. In this case I'm choosing to use the Agamatrix WaveSense Keynote meter here which I've previously done a video of and which I like particularly. So let me show you um, what it takes to calibrate first the one on the right. I take a blood glucose strip and a uh, slightly larger drop of blood. Wait for the countdown. Here we go. 176. Now I'm going to calibrate it against the Dexcom by plugging in the cable. The cable is one of the biggest design flaws, I think. It's way too long. And now let's count. I'm watching the timer in the VCR. When the graph comes up there, it's about 16 seconds later. And now it's calibrated, taking the reading from the One Touch Ultra, and it shows the one hour graph. Okay, so now let's go and calibrate against this. The, um, the very nice and very accurate WaveSense Keynote meter. Um, I like the design of the test strips on this. I also like their cost. In, in the case of this meter, I'm paying for the strips myself, and I was able to buy a box of 50 for about $20. That's 40 cents a strip, and it's a lot less than you pay for strips for many of the other manufacturers. It also takes a really small sample of blood. So here's the result, 179, and here's how I calibrate it. So I press past the one hour, three hour, nine hour graphs, and then I press and hold. When I get that symbol showing a, a test meter on a finger, I press in here and I go and I put in the, the value that I received, which I, I've already forgotten. I think it was 172. And I press OK, and then it gives me the number again with the date and time. And I press OK again, and the calibration is done. So the total calibration time is probably about the same. Here's the big difference to my mind. If I look at the graph on these two uh, systems, the one on the left is continuously reading a value that's typically higher by between 15 and 20 points than the one on the right. So if you look at the curve for the three hour profiles, they're remarkably similar, except this one is showing a number that's much higher than this one. And the reason is because this one is being calibrated with a much more accurate meter. So it's giving me numbers that are much closer to uh, my actual blood glucose reading. This one is giving me lower numbers and it's causing me to have an A1C that's higher because the actual value I believe is closer to this. So I like the idea that I can calibrate it with any meter I like which makes it easier I'm only dealing with one meter and also in my case I hope is more likely to give me accurate answers.